okay hi guys uh, welcome to the session today uh, uh, for the performance management revision session this is lukman rafiq here uh, the faculty member for the course performance management so uh, what am i going to do today unfortunately it had to be a session yesterday but uh, we could not do it yesterday due to some technical issues so we had to reschedule it i know that uh, the time that it is being conducted right now today may not be feasible for everyone because a lot of students are in a different time zone so you may actually be having uh, early morning or you may actually be uh, uh, in the i mean like uh, very very early morning so there could be different type of time zones uh, who would be attending the session today so but uh, there are a few things that generally the students have and uh, which i would actually like to answer the number one of them is would we be providing the recording to the uh, recording to this uh, specific session to people the answer is yes we would be providing the recording to the session uh, plus how long this session is going to be the plan is to go for um uh, five to six hours uh, but uh, again it would actually depend upon how things go about it depends upon how uh, you are actually uh, going about so uh, that's what it is going to be uh, plus uh, what happens is that what is going to be the agenda for session today i'm going to be doing different type of uh, questions from different areas uh, and i would be uh, so i'll be doing different type of questions and i will be revising the topics so we are just going to start off and start discussing about uh, this uh, specific uh, performance management so <laughs> I would have ideally loved to use the ACCA CB practice platform, but um, uh, just to make sure that uh, we get the maximum uh, questions, uh, uh, what I have actually decided is that I would rather be uh, using the uh, uh, spreadsheet and the and the and the Word document. That is what I will be doing. So that's what my major objective is going to be. Now, uh, before I start off, let's have a bit of a discussion about uh, this whole uh, thing which is basically when we talk about this performance uh, management so you would actually know that there are basically different uh, type of uh, slavers areas for this f5 performance management and you do have an idea that how exactly the paper is examined so generally for those of you who have actually forgotten or who haven't explored that how the paper is examined so let me just give you a bit of a guidance that the paper is examined like this uh, that you've got a section A, which is 15 objective test questions of two marks each. So that is actually gonna be 30 marks for section A. Then what is actually gonna be there? There is going to be a section B. And with respect to the section B, what happens is going to be, there is going to be three case OTQs. There are going to be three case OTQs. What do you mean by having three case OTQs? So three case OTQs is going to be, you will get one case and then you will have one, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. Five OTQs attached to it. So there is going to be a case plus five OTQs attached to it. Then they're going to be section C of the examination. And when we talk about section C of the examination, these questions are termed as constructed response questions. Constructed response questions. So basically you will get two questions of 20 marks. Each gives you the 40 marks. I bet you're going to get two questions of 20 marks each. That means it's going to be 40 marks each. That's how things are actually going to be. So basically uh, my agenda and my uh, focus for today's session is going to be that I would majorly be covering. I would majorly be covering the areas uh, from this section C. I would try to do the examination questions from section C so that we are able to generate more and more, more and more uh, uh, things from here. So uh, that is what it is. And uh, with respect to uh, the slabus areas, let me just give you a bit of a guidance about the slabus areas. So when you would look at the slabus areas, you would see that amongst the different type of slabus areas, there's this IT organizational performance system, specialized management accounting techniques. So generally, Speaking this and this section is basically section A and section B, section C, A, B, and C, A, B, and C. 
So you can have a different type of question, section A, section B, section C, from these three areas. Let's move a bit forward. Let's have a bit of a discussion. Um, so it's basically section A, B, like the OTQs are going to be from these areas. Managing information, sources of information, data analysis, ABC, target costing, life cycle, et cetera, et cetera. These are the areas from which the section A, section B questions are going to be made. Or in fact, you could say that these topics are not gonna be examined in section C questions. But for this decision making, but for the budgeting and control, and for the performance measurement and control, these are the areas which can be examined at all three levels, section A, section B, section C. So these could actually be examined at all three of the uh, syllabus uh, areas. So that's, that's how things are gonna be. Now let's just move forward. Let's just start discussing. <laughs> so this is a bit about the syllabus. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna start off uh, discussing a few of the questions. So the first question that I'm actually going to be discussing is about uh, this. Um, September, December 20, question number one. That's what I'm actually gonna be talking about. But before I will go on discussing the question, I would actually explain to you the areas which are being examined in part and parcel of the question. So the question that I'm actually going through the first is the September, December 2020 examination question number one. So it's actually gonna be what? It's actually gonna be September, December. September, December 2020 question number one, that's what it is going to be. Now, if I could just give you a bit of an idea that what exactly is the topic that's being examined in here. So you would see that uh, it says that calculate both the number of customers, health nuts, need to break even and the margin of safety as a percentage for the month of this, this, this. Explain what each of your calculation tells you about the performance of gym and the cafe. So we got to talk about the break even. I'm just gonna come on to that. Then it says calculate budgeted total weighted average contribution to sale ratio and the budgeted profit per month for health and nuts. Uh, and lastly, it says that advise health and nuts considering both financial and non-financial factors, whether it should replace the cafe with a crashy and whether calculations provide enough information to make such a decision. So there are three requirements. Now, before I go on, uh, let me just uh, have a discussion about that how exactly are we gonna deal with this specific scenario? So what I'll do is that I will have a quick recall of the syllabus area, which is about the CVP and the break-even analysis. So my first thing that I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna have a discussion about the syllabus area, CVP analysis and break-even. Okay. So let's have a discussion about the CVP analysis, which is actually a cost volume profit analysis. Uh, what exactly is this cost volume profit analysis? It is also termed as break-even analysis. <coughs> it is also termed as break-even analysis. And let me just have a quick discussion about this area that what exactly are the things that are covered up in the CVP analysis. So whenever we talk about the CVP, uh, the first thing is that you need to understand the concept of break-even. I will just have a quick recall of the different ratios, which is number one is there's a break-even ratio. What exactly do you mean break-even? <clears throat> the concept of break-even is that there is no profit. <clears throat> the concept of break-even is that there is no profit and there is no loss. So when we talk about the concept of break-even, it's actually about no profit, no loss. And in order to do the break-even calculations, there are different concepts that we need to keep in mind, which is contribution. So contribution is your sales minus variable cost. That's what a contribution is. If I talk about the contribution margin, the another name for the contribution margin is actually the CS ratio. And what exactly is a CS ratio or the contribution margin? 
It's a contribution divided by sales multiplied by 100. It's a contribution divided by sales multiplied by 100. That's what a contribution ratio is. So if we want to talk about the break-even point, that how many, what is going to be the break-even point? So if you want to calculate the break-even point in terms of units, it is actually going to be like this. You would say the fixed cost divided by contribution per unit. So we are going to say that it's the fixed cost divided by contribution per unit. That's what the break-even point is in terms of units. Then similarly, if I talk about the break-even point in terms of uh, dollars, which is basically the sales value. So how exactly are we gonna get it? So let me just give you a bit of an idea. We're gonna say that the break-even point in terms of dollars is gonna be like this. It's gonna be the fixed cost divided by a CS ratio. It's gonna be the fixed cost divided by the CS ratio. That's what the break-even point in terms of dollars is going to be. Then similarly, when we talk about the margin of safety, so what exactly is the margin of safety? So the concept of margin of safety is that it is the budgeted sales minus, <coughs> minus the break-even sales. It's the budgeted sale minus the break-even sale. Now, what does margin of safety tells you? That if you're budgeted to have, let's say $100,000 of sale, minus you were having a break-even sale of 78,000. So that, that means there is a $22,000 of the margin. So that means that your sales have to go down by $22,000 if you have to run into losses. Similarly, if I talk about the margin of safety percentage, if I talk about the margin of safety percentage, how exactly am I gonna do it? It's gonna be like this. Budgeted sales minus break-even sales divided by budgeted sales. So margin of safety percentage is gonna be the budgeted sales minus the break-even sales divided by the budgeted sales. That's what the margin of safety percentage is. Then there is this one last uh, uh, formula that I would like to discuss with respect to this break-even analysis, which is the formula. At times what happens is you as an entity suggest that we want to earn X, Y, Z profit. So if you as an entity want to earn X, Y, Z profit, how do you go about with the things? So what you do is that you say, I've got fixed costs. And in order to, in, our, in that fixed cost, you add your target profit. And divide by, you say that we've got the CS ratio. So I bet it's a fixed cost plus the target profit divided by CS ratio. So it has to be fixed cost plus target profit divided by CS ratio. Now, so this is something that's about the basic formula for the CVP analysis, the cost volume profit analysis. Now let's have a bit of a discussion. Let's talk a bit further about the other things. So the other things that we are gonna be talking about is that um, at times what happens is as an entity, you sell uh, uh, more than one products. Let's say you are selling two products. You are selling three products. So how do we go about doing the calculation in case of two, three products? So in case if we have got multiple product, we go about calculating the weighted average. Contribution by unit. We go about calculating the weighted average. Contribution to sales ratio. So I repeat, in case if you have got multiple products, what we do is that we go about calculating the weighted average contribution per unit. We go about calculating the weighted average contribution to sale ratio. Now, what exactly is this weighted average contribution per unit and weighted average contribution to sale ratio? So let's say that you've got product A and you've got product B. So the selling price of product A is 5,000. Selling price of product B is 3,000. 
the variable cost of product A is, let's say, uh, 3,500, and for this, it is going to be 2,000. So resultingly, the contribution is gonna be 1,500. Resultingly, the contribution is gonna be 1,000. So you've got a product where you've got a contribution of 1,500, and you've got a product where you've got a contribution of 1,000. And we are being told that the number of units <clears throat> that are in demand for these products for product A, there is basically a demand for uh, 1,200 units. For product B, there is a demand of 2,000 units. <clears throat> so what I could actually do is that I could say it's 12 and two. If I want to calculate the ratio, I could say it's 12 and two, 12 and 20. And I could just simplify this ratio like this. I could say if this is divided by two, so it's six and 10. Further, then it is basically three and five. So I could say that this is basically a ratio of three is to five. What is it? It's a ratio of three is to five. Now, so what is what are you gonna do if you wanna gonna, if you have to calculate the weighted average contribution per unit? I repeat, if you got to calculate the weighted average contribution per unit, how are you gonna do that? You're simply gonna do that like this. You're gonna say that the contribution of product A is 1500 and the ratio of product A is three units. And you got to add it up and you got to say that you've got thousand as a contribution uh, for product B and you've got five units for product B. You divide it by, you divide it by uh, the number of units. So we've got three plus five. So that's what we have got, we've got eight. So resultingly what happens is 1500 into three, that's one thing, then thousand into five, uh, that's another thing. And whatever it is, it's actually gonna divide it by eight. So hence resultingly 1187.5 is gonna be a weighted average contribution per unit. So how do you go about calculating the weighted average contribution per unit? So in order to calculate the weighted average contribution per unit, this is the approach that you adopt. This is the methodology that you follow for the computation of weighted average contribution per unit. Now let's move a bit forward and let's say that if we need to calculate the weighted average. Contribution to sale ratio, how are we gonna do it? So we are simply gonna do it like this. We're gonna say contribution is 1500 for product A multiply by three plus thousand for product B multiply by five. You divided by you divided by what? You divide by selling price of five thousand and then three thousand. So you've got five thousand multiplied by three plus three thousand multiplied by five. Hence, resultingly, what are you gonna get? So you're gonna get 0 0.3167, or you could rather say 31.67%. You could rather say 31.67, 31.67. Are you people okay now? Yeah, are you people okay with all this? Okay, lovely, this is good to hear. Now let's actually move forward. And let's just start discussing things. So how are we gonna go about, um, if I could just keep this question in front of you, the first requirement to the question was that you got to calculate the number of customer health nut needs to break even. So number of customers actually mean number of units, break even point in terms of units and the margin of safety as a percentage for the month of June for the gym and the cafe and explain what in your what your calculations tells about performance of gym and the cafe. So you got to calculate break-even point in terms of units. You got to calculate the margin of safety as a percentage. And the third thing is that you got to say, what does your calculations suggest? So that's what the requirement of the question is. And what I would want you people to do is that to take uh, five, six minutes, it's basically uh, this first part of the question which you have to do. So take, uh, uh, the time right now is uh, is uh, 12 past one. So I'm giving you five minutes time. You've got time till 11. 
so it time till 118 pm that you got to cover it up it's time till 118 pm you got to cover it up go out uh, so i'm giving you five six minutes try to calculate break okay first thing that we need to do is that we need to read through this specific question and see what are the things that are available it says that um, health and nuts is a fitness center offering pay as you go gym facilities it has fully fitted gym with a capacity to accommodate 200 users at one time so what does it have it has got a capacity to accommodate 200 users at one time it also has 100 200 users at one time it also has 100 car parking spaces and on site cafe both of which are only for the customers using the gym so they've got 100 car parking spaces plus an on site cafe <clears throat> the fitness center has shower facilities for customers and health nuts provides all customers with a clean towel to use on entry it's open 360 days a year from 7 a.m till 9 p.m customers pay 8.4 dollar for access to the gym for one hour plus unlimited time in the cafe if customers want to use their car park they have to pay an additional one dollar per visit and 80 percent of visiting customers use the park health nuts has been monitoring the number of customers attending throughout each day for the month of june which was considered to be an average month and for which health nuts was open 30 days it is determined that the average number of customers is 330 with 40 of those customers attending between 9 a.m to 5 p.m so it's actually more of the thing that is happening after the 5 p.m that the customers are majorly coming to you after 5 p.m that is something that's happening now what else does it say it says that it has uh, the total cost of the fitness center for june excluding the cafe have also been recorded and analyzed as follows so there is a fixed cost per month there's a variable cost per customer and it says on average half of the customer also use the cafe in june with average spend per customer of this 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 of this is spend of this is spend 60 percent related to drinks which have a profit margin of 60 percent and the remainder related to food items which have a profit margin of 40 percent the specific fixed costs associated with running the cafe are 3600 for the month that's what it is now what is the question's requirement it's basically like this the question says that you have to calculate the number of customers that need to break even and the margin of safety as a percentage for the month of june for the gym and for the cafe so let's actually have a discussion about the gym and let's actually have a discussion about the cafe so first of all how do we actually go about it uh, in order to do this calculation health nuts company in order to do this calculation you got to say that what is the uh, determining revenues so what happens is that if you've got revenue you got to determine the revenue for gym you got to determine the revenue for cafe now how do we go about determining revenue for gym for the cafe let's try to see that okay it says has a fully fitted site with a capacity to accommodate 200 users at one time also has 100 car parking spaces now uh, both of which are only for customers using the gym so on so customers pay access uh, for one hour plus unlimited in the cafe Payment by each customer for the gym is going to be 8.4. So payment by each customer for the gym is going to be 8.4. Now, what else is there? If customer wants to use the car park, they pay additional $1 per visit and 80% of the customers use the car park. So basically, car park payment. So when we talk about the car park payment, so the car park payment is going to be what? The car park payment is going to be 0 0.8 multiplied by $1. So it's going to be 0 0.8. Uh, 
Um, Health Nuts has been monitoring number of customers attending throughout each day for the month of June, which was considered to be an average month, uh, which was considered to be an average month. And for, and for um, each day of June, which was considered to be an average month, Nuts was open for 30 days. And what else is there? It is determined that the average number of customers per day is 330, with 40 of those attending between 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay, now. So let's actually have a discussion about it. Uh, that it says total cost of the fitness center for the June, excluding the cafe, have been recorded and analyzed as follows. Variable cost per customer is one point. There's gonna be less. Variable cost, which is minus 1.2. So hence, what happens is that you end up getting contribution per unit. You end up getting contribution per unit. <clears throat> now, what have we got? We have got the fixed cost. And the fixed cost are explained as $48,000. Then what actually happens is that fixed costs are $48,000. Then what actually happens is that it has to be the break-even point. The break-even point is gonna be fixed cost divided by contribution by unit. So break-even point is going to be 6,000 users. 6,000 users. Yeah, do you get it? Uh, Melisa, you got it right. Neha, you got it right. Nafis, Najib, uh, you did not mention Neha. Okay, now see. <clears throat> so that's what it is. Now let's talk about the margin of safety. for gym company, the margin of safety for gym company. If I talk about the margin of safety for gym company, I would say, how do we go about calculating the margin of safety? What is margin of safety? Margin of safety is that uh, the actual customer minus the break-even customer. Let's say actual customers, how do we go about doing the actual customers? It says the gym is open for 330 uh, for 30 days. It has determined that average number of customers per day is 330 with 40 of these. attending during the time 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So 20 of these attending during the time 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Now see, so basically what happens is that 3.30 multiply by 30 days because the gym is open for 30 days. The break-even customers is going to be 6,000. Hence, Margin of safety as a percentage is going to be what? 9,900 minus 6,000 divided by 39.34. 39.34 is what it is. 39.3439 is what it is. Yeah, lovely. So that's what we have been able to do with respect to the gym that we have been able to calculate the break-even point like this for the chip. Now, what I'm actually gonna do is that I'm more or less gonna copy the whole of it uh, for the cafe and I'm just gonna try and replicate it for the cafe. Payment made by each customer for cafe. 
how do we get it half of the customers also use the cafe in june half of the customers also use the cafe in june with average spend per customer of 2.2 dollars of this is spent 60% related to drinks which have a profit margin of 60% remainder to food items which have a profit margin of this the specific fixed cost running with the cafe is this 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 Okay, I'd be better off deleting all this. Now see, um, for the cafe, what are you gonna do? You're gonna say that average spend per customer. Because what happens is that, unfortunately, you're not sell selling out one thing, you're selling out two different things. And because you are selling out two different things, so you got to calculate a weighted average contribution. What do we need to calculate? You got to calculate the weighted average contribution. So average spend is basically 2.2. Average spend is 2.2. Average contribution per customer is calculated like this, drinks, food item. Equals to 2.2 into 60%, into 60%, sorry, into 60%. So you've got 2.2 into 60% into 60%. What is it that you've got 2.2 into 60% into 60%? Uh, for the food item, we've got, um, the remainder is food item and they've got a 40% contribution. 2.2. Resultingly, what's going to happen is that average contribution per customer is going to be the sum of these two. 1.14. The fixed costs of cafe are what? 3,600 per month. Break even. Customers are going to be 3146.85 is what the break even customers. For the margin of safety calculations, actual number of customers, how many of the people visiting visit the cafe? Half of the customers also use the cafe in June. So it simply say 50% of this. 9900 equals to 50% of this. So, and the break even point is this margin of safety units is going to be this. So MOS percentage is gonna be this units divided by the actual number of customers. So it's actually gonna be what? 36.42. Are you all okay now? Yeah, are you all okay now? I can just zoom out.
Okay, why did I multiply 2.2 into 60%? Because I'm being told that an average customer has spent 2.2 rupees, 2.2 dollars, of which 60% is basically on drinks. Of which 60% is on drinks. And for each drink that we sell, we earn a profit of 60%. Similarly, the remaining customers is spent on food items. And for every food item that we sell, we get a profit of 40%. So that's why it's actually going to be like this. So hence, the total is going to be the sum of these. Two. Do you get it now? Yeah, do you get it now? Okay, lovely. Now, what is the next requirement of the question? It says that explain what each of your calculations in A tells health and nuts, he tells health nuts about the performance of the gym and the cafe. So basically, what does it tell us about the performance of the gym and the cafe? So health nuts. Now, oh. the calculations in part A suggest that Jim needs a minimum of six thousand customers. And the cafes need a minimum of three one four seven customers to break even. That is arrive at a position when they will not be making profit or incurring losses. Furthermore, what else is there? The margin of safety, a measure of, I just fade away, please. Okay, margin of safety is a measure of the number of units
over and above the break even sales that entity makes margin of safety percentage is a indicator of the percentage by which sales have to reduce before entity will run into losses for both of gym and cafe the margin of safety is 39% and 36% which is more or less which suggests that existing number of customers have to fall by 39% and 36% before health nuts runs into losses yeah is that okay okay lovely so let's just move a bit forward and let's just see things further now what next is there the next situation that we need to understand is that uh, we now need to move on to the next requirements of the question and the next requirement of the question was calculate budgeted total weighted average cs ratio and the budgeted profit for the month of health nut if it closes the cafe and opens creche instead so you got to calculate the weighted average cs ratio and the budgeted profit if it closes the cafe and opens creche instead so there is actually a proposal of creche uh, let's just go about with the creche and then we are going to start discussing so again you take 5 minutes and then we'll start discussing what's going to happen to this part it says creche proposals after reviewing all of the above information the manager of health nuts has put together a proposal to close the cafe at the fitness center and convert it into creche for children this would mean that parents could leave their children in the creche while they use the fitness center between hours 9 am to 5 pm only what are the number of customers who visit between 9 am to 5 pm so 40 customers 40 customers visit during the during this time period <laughs> the creche is expected sorry uh the the charge for the creche would be 4 dollar per child per hour initial research suggests that customers have an average of two children each okay the creche is expected to attract new customers and increase the average number of customers between 9 am and 5 pm by 300% only these new customers will use the creche facilities car park is expected to continue to be 80% the fixed cost associated with running creche would be 8000 per month with a variable cost of half a dollar per child per hour so what are we going to do we're going to try to see that what is actually going to happen now because we need to calculate for the part c the weighted average contribution to sales ratio and in order to calculate the weighted average contribution to sales ratio what is it that you need to do you need to actually understand that uh, what are the things that are actually going to uh, be happening with respect to all this so let's talk about the gym first the existing customers is 9900 increase in customers uh, is going to be <clears throat> na is going to be you had 40 customers every day visiting 
from nine to five. So this 40 customers are going to increase by 300%. So it's gonna be multiplied by 300% and multiply by 30. So 3,600 is the customers that is actually gonna happen. Uh, that's the increase in the customers. So you'll get the revised number of customers, which is gonna be like this. This plus this. I repeat, so there is actually gonna be the revised number of customers, which is gonna be 13,500. Now what is gonna happen is that um, the selling price per customer is gonna be Average selling price is gonna be this plus this. The average variable cost is gonna be again minus 1.2. So average contribution per customer is gonna be this plus this. Then what happens is that total sales, total contribution. So this is actually gonna be this into this, this, into this. <clears throat> so total sales and the total contribution is what you are actually going to um, go about. Now, for the gym, what about the crèche? So we got to actually do the calculation for crèche. How do we do the calculation for crèche? It's gonna say that initial research suggests that each customer has got two children. number of customers bringing children is gonna be 3,600. Number of child per customer is gonna be two. Total number of child for whom fee will be paid is gonna be this into this is gonna be this into this <sighs> selling price is three, sorry, four, variable cost is 0 0.5. Contribution per unit is this minus this. The contribution per unit is this minus this 3.5. Um, now what else is there? So the total sales are gonna be this into this contribution 
is gonna be this into this. Now what is actually gonna happen? What was the requirement of the question? The requirement of the question was that calculate the total budgeted total weighted average CS ratio. Weighted average CS ratio is gonna be the total contributions, this plus this, divided by total sale, this plus this. Hence, 87.0588. This is weighted average CS ratio. What else do we have? For the budgeted profit, budgeted sales, less budgeted variable cost Contribution is going to be this plus this. So the variable cost is going to be the balancing figure. $19,800 less budgeted fixed cost. Jim. For the gym, the fixed cost would remain the same, which was originally there, 48,000. For the crashe, the variable cost is going to be for the crash, the variable cost is going to be 8,000. Hence, what happens is that this is 56,000. The budgeted profit is going to be this 77,200. The budgeted profit is going to be 77,200. Yeah, is this okay to you all? Has any one of you got it right? Yeah, is everyone okay now? Shall I move forward?
Yeah, is everyone okay? Shall I move forward? Okay, lovely. Now, let's discuss further. Okay, so we are done with this parts. Last part of the question probably is that advise health nuts considering both financial and non-financial factors, whether it should replace the cafe with creche and whether calculations in part C provide enough information to make such decision. Uh, Neha, yes, I'll just try to do. Uh, probably, I don't know if I have actually got one or not. I probably asked my teaching assistant to identify a question uh, for this today's session. But still, let's just see what happens is that. Okay, for the financial factor, you would compare profit with cafe and gym with the profit under gym and crash. So do we have the profits calculated already? Profit with gym and cafe. Contribution from gym. Contribution from cafe. Less fixed cost. Gym. Fixed cost cafe. So if you want to compare financially, that's how you're going to be. Uh, the contribution per unit is this eight. The number of users are this. And for the cafe, it's actually going to be like this. The fixed cost of gym was 48,000. The fixed cost of cafe was 3,600. Then you've got 51,600. 51,600. So the profit was three three two six two. Profit with cafe and gym was dollar three three two six three. 
while the prophet with jim and crashe is while the prophet with jim and crashe is 77000 from the financial perspective it is worthwhile closing cafe and opening crashe as the profits are increasing by more than 100% because the profits are increasing by more than 100% the other factors need to be considered before making a decision to replace crash uh, replace cafe with crash for how long this new number of customers will be sustainable what will be the impact on the other customers who visit after 5 pm and spend time at cafe as they can spend unlimited time at cafe because you see what happens is there are a lot of people there are a lot of people who are actually visiting you they are staying there and uh, they are actually um they are actually staying there at the cafe for unlimited time and this could actually be impact now the predictability the reliability of the data predicted the reliability of the data predicted uh, what other factors can you think of yeah what other factors can we think of yeah what other points can you think of yeah what other points you can think of
<clears throat> okay, cost of setting up crash. Yeah, I've already discussed the fees that uh, existing customers will be lost out. On the existing customers who visit, they may switch to other gyms where they can get cafes. Right, so we have actually discussed these different type of points and we've also covered up. So we've also covered up this whole question, which was about the health nuts company. So this was a question on, so this was a question on break-even analysis and it covered up a lot of uh, different type of concepts pertaining to break-even. So I hope that you actually did enjoy this question. So I will now switch on to another question, but before I do that, do you uh, do let me know in case if there are any questions. <laughs> okay, you're asking for three minutes break, Melissa. I will probably give 15 minute break before I resume again, because we have already, already had a good two hour session for this uh, question. I know it took us a lot of time, but again, the main objective is not just to do the question, but to take you people through this. So we are going to take a 15 minute break before we actually continue further. Okay, guys, so welcome back. Uh, we're just going to resume um, and we are going to continue things forward. So the next question that I will be doing or I shall be discussing is about this uh, decision making. Um, and let's just have a discussion that what exactly is this next question all about. So when it comes to the next question, I am actually referring to question number one of September, December 2021 examination. Question number one of section C. Um, the name of the question is Bella Houston Company. What is it? It's actually Bella Houston Company. Now when we talk about the Bella Houston Company, what exactly are the things that are being covered up? Uh, so I'll just go through the requirement of the question and just take you through that, what exactly are the things that need to be done. So if we are gonna be talking about it, uh, one of the requirements of the question is that it says, calculate the optimum production plan and the resulting total contribution earned, assuming that the order is, order with run wild is supplied in full. So you have to talk about the optimum production plan. Okay, but, huh? Charge optimum production plan. Now the second one of them is calculate the maximum financial penalty. Bella Houston company would be prepared to accept if it does not complete Runwild's order in full. The third thing is discuss whether Bella Houston should fulfill Runwild's order in full. In then it says define resources. So basically this question is about, this question is about limiting factors. This question is about limiting factors. Now, before I go on discussing this question, I would just have a bit of a discussion about the limiting factor analysis and how the decision-making is done using this limiting factor analysis. So the first one of them is basically, let's talk about the limiting factor. What exactly is the concept of limiting factor? A limiting factor is any resource or any thing which could which could restrict entities performance. So any resource, anything that could restrict the entity's performance is going to be the limiting resource. And there could actually be the case that the material could be the limiting resource, the labor could be the limiting resource, the machine capacity could be the limiting resource, at times the sales demand could be the limiting resource. So there could be multiple types of limiting resource that could happen. 
So how do we deal with limiting factors in IO? How to deal with um, limiting factors in IO? Let's have a discussion. The first thing that you're going to do is that you're going to say that the first step is to identify the limiting resource. Now I see the first step is to identify the limiting resource. The second step is that calculate contribution by unit of limiting resource. Rank products. And the fourth step is allocate resources facing this thing. I repeat, wherever you are facing the situation that you are facing one of the limited uh, resource of the limiting factor, then how exactly are you gonna deal with that limiting factor? You would identify the limiting resource. From the limiting resource that you're gonna identify, what are you gonna do next? You are gonna say that the next thing is that uh, we need to calculate the contribution per unit of limiting resource. The third thing that we actually need to do is that we need to rank the products. We need to rank the products. The fourth thing is that allocate resources according. Now, this is basically what This is how you deal with the limiting resource. I bet this is how you deal with the limiting resource. Now, what next is there? The next situation is that at times what happens is that there are make or buy decisions. What exactly happens with respect to make or buy decision? So again, with respect to make or buy decision, you what you do is that you calculate extra cost of external purchase per unit of limiting resource. Number two is that what you do is that you rank, rank products. And the third thing is that you allocate resources. You rank products and then what happens is that you allocate the resources, that's how you do it. Now let's have a discussion about. It. So basically I've told you that how do you go about with a make or buy decision? The concept of this make or buy decision is gonna be, you have to calculate the cost of external purchase per unit of limiting resource, rank the products and then allocate the resources accordingly. So now what we are gonna do is that our requirements here are that we have to calculate the optimum production plan and we have to calculate the maximum penalty that we would be willing to pay to this company. So the one thing that you got to do is that you got to calculate the optimal production plan and uh, the resulting total contribution earned from March, assuming that 
the order will run while it's supplied and so on and so forth. So basically, let's have a discussion about it. Uh, I'm actually giving you five minutes uh, so that you could just read through this part and then we move forward. Yeah, just take a quick five minutes, read through this part. Okay, if I could just take you through this. It says Bella Houston Company manufactures three types of running shoes, which it sells to sports clothing related retailers. Road, which are for running on roads, spikes, which are for running for athletic tracks, and trail, uh, which are used for running off road in rural locations. Each of these products are different. Each of these products are different, uh, use differing amount of the same resources. Uh, then financial information on the rescue requirements related to these products are as follows. So you've got road, you've got a spikes, and you've got trail. Uh, you've got what? You've got the selling price per share per pair of shoes. You've got the variable cost. You've got uh, the direct material. You've got the direct labor. You've got the machine hours. You have got the fixed overheads absorbed per pair of shoes, so on and so, so forth. Now, what else is there? It says fixed overheads are absorbed at the rate of four per direct labor hour. Bella Houston Company uses a just-in-time production system. So what does Bella Houston Company uses? It uses a just-in-time production system. Now, what next is there? Let's move a bit forward and let's discuss a bit further. So kindly read through this, then we can move forward. Read through this. Now, what else does it say with respect to this page? It says demand and resource availability for March is demand for the three products is this, this, this. Bella Houston has received a special order from Run Wild, which is not included in the demand estimates. Above, Run Wild are major sports retailer who have an extensive customer base and are known for stocking the most popular brands of sportswear. 
the order is to supply a maximum of 200 pairs of each type of shoe at a discount of $8 on the standard selling price. So what is it? It's actually like you got to, you got to actually provide uh, 200 pairs of each of the type of shoe. Runwell will charge a financial penalty if the order is not completed in March. If the first order is successful, Runwell would be keen to enter into a regular supply contract. Now, usually, Bella Stone has sufficient resources to meet production. However, during March, the maximum availability of the following resources has been identified. Now, the next part is that demand and availability for the April. Now, what's that? It says Bella Houston company predicted that resource availability in March would continue in April. However, it has been discovered availability of direct material and labor will be 15% less than in March. Available machine time and demand estimates are unchanged. Run while would not be placing an order in April. Now, what are we talking about? We're talking about the optimal production plan and the resulting total contribution, assuming that order is supplied in full. And the second thing is that maximum financial penalty that would be prepared if it does not complete run while's order in full. Now let's try to have an understanding. So basically it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be that simple. It's, it's gonna require a lot of calculations before we could just go on doing the things. Um, so first of all, it's basically like this. You need to understand that the selling price is this, this, and this. Material is $5 per meter. So it's one and a half, one and a half uh, meter. Then this is basically three divided by five means 0.6 meter. And this is six divided by five means 1.2 meter. Labor is seven per hour, it's one hour. It's basically 1.5 hour, it's one hour. Machine hour is 10, so it's 0 0.4 hour, 0 0.2 hour, 0 0.3 hour. Fix the words are like this, 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 so and so, so and so. Now, uh, what else do we need to do? We need to calculate the availability of the resources and um, and whether we would have uh, we would have them sufficient or not. Because you see what happens is that Till the time you don't identify the limiting resource, you cannot just go forward. So the first step with respect to this specific question is gonna be, How would we go about doing things? Let's let's have a bit of a discussion about it. <clears throat> First of all, what would happen is that you would say that um, demand for the products, what is it gonna be? Number one, road, spikes, trails. Um, 2300. 1400, 1650. We have the resources, which is material per unit, total material needed. Then we have got labor hours per unit total labor costs. Then we've got machine hours per unit. Total machine costs. Now, how would we go about it? So we've got material per unit 
1.6 and 1.2. So this is what is there with respect to total material. For the labor hours, it's one, 1.51. 1 so the total labor hours are gonna be this into this. This is what the total labor hours is going to be. When we we'll talk about machine hours per unit, it's 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So this is what we have. Total resources required resources available okay just just wait a bit just wait a bit please just wait a bit because first of all you need to identify the limiting resource without considering run wild Yeah. Okay, you want to add up for the um, What do you want to do? You want to add up for the remaining or what? Okay, if I could just add up a special order, then it's gonna change. If you are, if you wanna add up a special order, it's gonna change. I'm adding 200 to each one of them. I'm adding up 200 to each one of them now. So what are the resources available? It's basically 7,200, 6,900. 7200 6900 1815 hours surplus slash shortfall surplus is going to be this minus this or shortfall so here we need to see if we have a surplus or if we have a shortfall so our total machine hours is what the limiting resource is going to be, is what the limiting factor is gonna be. So based on the available information, the total machine hours is going to be the scarce resource, is going to be the limiting resource. 
So what would you do? You would actually try to identify, uh, uh, you would try to identify the contribution per, uh, the contribution per item. So basically, machine hours is a limiting, limiting resource. Machine hours is a limiting resource. Now what next is there? How would you go about doing the calculation? You would go about doing the calculations like this. You would say that um, number of, sorry, the contribution per unit for road, for spikes and for trail. How could we do the calculation? It's basically selling price, less variable cost. Here we're being given profit. If you add up just fixed cost to profit, you will end up getting the answer. If you would, So what are you gonna do? You're gonna say 37.5 plus four. You're gonna say 23.5 plus six. You're gonna say 32 plus four. That's what the contribution per unit is gonna be. We have the machine hours. Per unit. Then what happens is that we need to calculate the contribution per machine hour. It's gonna be this divided by this. Contribution per machine hour. If I do the rankings, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna say this is first, this is second, and this is third. So if contract with if contract with run wild. If contract with run wild is undertaken, then optimal production plan shall be as under. Available machine hours We need to have the available machine hours, which is 1815, less run wild order. So we've got road spikes and trails. It's actually 200 units multiply by 0.4. 200 units multiply by 0.2. 200 units multiply by 0.3. So it's basically the available machine hours, first of all, allocated to run while order. Then what actually happens is that Then what happens is that you allocate to spikes. The total demand for spikes is what? Fourteen hundred units multiply by 
the time taken per spike is 0.2. Next is time taken for trail. So how would you go about doing the trail? It's actually gonna be like this. For the trail, it's gonna be 1650 units multiplied by 0.3. Now, what happens is that the whole of 860 hours are allocated to roads. But when you are gonna talk about the roads, so it's actually gonna be what? For the spikes, it's additional 1400 units. For the trail, it was 1650 units. For the roads, it's actually gonna be 860 divided by 0.4. The total demand was greater, but 2150 is what you could produce. Hence, optimal production plan. This is a balancing figure. Hence, the optimal production plan shall be what? The optimal production plan shall be, these spikes are gonna be 1400 plus 200. The trails are gonna be 1650 plus 200 and roads are gonna be, roads are gonna be 2150 plus 200. That's how it is actually gonna be. So that's the number of spikes, number of uh, trails and number of roads that you are actually gonna produce. So the requirement of the question was calculate, determine the optimal production plan and the total contribution earned for March. Assuming that the order will run while is supplied in full. What price have they requested you to supply at? They've requested us to supply at this. We got to supply at a discount of $8 and a standard selling. So how is it actually going to be happening? Let's just try to see. Total contribution under the optimal plan is going to be like this. Non run wild through run wild spike trails and then roads. So you talk about the number of units, you talk about the contribution per unit. And then you talk about the contribution. So the number of units are gonna be this are gonna be this, are gonna be this, are gonna be this. The contribution per unit is gonna be Now the total contribution here is gonna be this into this.
from the run wild order, it's gonna be like this. It's 200 each, the number of units. The contribution is gonna be this minus eight. Why? Because you're gonna give me giving it at a discount of eight, eight and eight. Hence the total contribution is gonna be this much. Two double zero seven seven five is what the total contributions is going to be. Two double zero seven seven five is what the total contribution is going to be. Yeah, is that okay? Yeah, is that okay to you all? Optimal production plan. Okay, let me just come back to you. Uh, wait about it. Just give me a minute. Okay, now see, when you have to establish the optimal production plan, how do you go about doing that? So in order to establish the optimal production plan, the first thing is that you need to understand you've got 18, 15 machine hours available. Uh, the 200 units each is going to be used for the run wild order. So we have used the machine hours and number of machine hours multiplied by 200. Then we said a spike says 1400 is the demand. Trade is 1650 and the balancing uh, and the end of the day, it had to be zero. So 860 was the balancing figure. So what we did was we said that per unit it's 0.4. So if 860 hours are available, divide by 0.4 gives you 2150. So the optimal production plan is going to be 1400 plus 200, 1650 plus 200, 2150 plus 200. The total contribution under the optimal plan is gonna be like this with non run wild with run wild order this and this. Do you get it now? Yeah, do you get it now? Okay, anyone else having any other question till now? Okay, let's move on to the next part of the requirement. It says calculate maximum financial penalty Bella Houston uh, would be prepared to accept if it does not complete run wild's uh, order in full. So how much of the penalty would it be willing to accept? What's the penalty? Uh, they're gonna charge a penalty. They're gonna charge a penalty, financial penalty if the order is not fully complete in March. 
Yeah, in every scenario, we complete the special order first. If this first order is successful, then White would take into so and so, so and so. Um, have they mentioned the penalty? Have they mentioned about the penalty? No. They say that they are gonna be they're gonna be charging the penalty. I repeat, what are they gonna do? They're gonna be charging the penalty. That's what they are gonna do. So what is it actually gonna happen if you are actually going to divert your production from run wild? And if you're going to divert your production to uh, Bella Houston, uh, the other existing products of yours. So ultimately you would be skipping the run wilds uh, requirement and you would be having a penalty. So now what's the maximum penalty you'd be willing to pay? I mean, what's the maximum penalty you'd be willing to pay? Do you have any idea how to calculate that? Do you have any idea how to calculate that? Yeah. Any idea how to calculate that? Yeah, lost contribution. Now, how are we gonna do that? So let's just try to understand that if I talk about part two, Assume that priority is not given to run wild order. Assume that priority is not given to run wild order. Now, assume that priority is not given to run wild order. What is actually gonna happen? What is gonna happen is that production under the existing ranking. So what would actually happen is that you would say that on the basis of existing ranking, we'll be operating like this. The units are gonna be 1400. The units are gonna be 1650 and the units are gonna be 2300. The contribution per unit is gonna be, is gonna be this. Contribution per unit is gonna be this. Contribution per unit is gonna be this. So what happens is that this is the total contribution. What is it? It's a total contribution. Now, number of hours remaining for processing run wild order is going to be like this. Hours available. How many hours were available? The total number of hours available were 18, 15. Then what happens is you had these spikes, trails and roads. Mm. 
machine time per unit total time so per unit machine time is 0.4 per unit machine time is 0.2 per unit machine time is 0.3 so the total time is going to be Yeah, is this okay? Yeah, but is this okay? So you have 235 machine hours available. Now allocated to run wild order in same sequence. Spike trails and roads, 200 units, 0.4 per unit. So one, one, five hours is what is available. <clears throat> so how would we do it? We would say that, I think that there is something wrong. Because apparently if I do 200 and if I do 0.3, I would have still be left with 55. There is something wrong somewhere. Can you just identify? I bet there is something wrong somewhere. Can you just identify? Okay, the error here that we have made is basically that we have used the wrong timing for them. The spikes, the timing was 0.2. The trails, the timing was 0.3. The roads, the timing were 0.4. We've used wrong timings there. So 120 hours are available. So what actually has to happen is that it has to come to zero. It has to come to zero. How would it come to zero? It's going to be okay. 40 hours could be made available. So basically, this has to change. It has to be 40 divided by 0 0.4. 40 divided by 0 0.4. Spike is like this. Trails is like this. Roads is like 
this. Okay, 50 units. Now, so what would happen is that if 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 we skip this uh, company, your yeah, time per unit was wrong. Yeah, if we if we skip this run while order, how would we go about it? And but if we skip the run while order, how exactly are we gonna go about it? We would be doing the normal production. Now, if we are gonna be doing the normal production, so we need to establish that what is gonna be the total contributions that we are gonna be earning. Contribution per unit. Total contribution. Let me just see. Earlier also we have made an error. For the spike it was the contribution per unit for the spike was 29.5. For the trails, it was 36. And for the roads, it was 41.5. So our earlier contribution was this. Now, the contribution per unit again, for the spike, it has to be 29.5. For the trails, it has to be 36. For the roads, it has to be 41.5. The total contribution is gonna be this into this. Um, they're gonna be paying $8 less. Hence, this is gonna be this into this. Hence, what actually happens is that this is what the total contribution is going to be. 207725. So basically what happens is that if we don't go for run while order completely, so we earn 207725. Maximum financial penalty that run while would be willing to pay shall be as under. Contribution with run while not a priority is this. Contribution with complete delivery for run while That's actually 206525. Maximum penalty is the amount of extra contribution earned due to decision to skip run while production. It's gonna be this minus this. So 1200 is the penalty that you'd be willing to pay. I bet 1200 is the penalty that you'd be willing to pay. I can just zoom out for you people so that you could see. I'll share the Excel file also, but there was some error I had actually put in or connected the wrong contribution and wrong time. So we have just covered that up now. So kindly look at it and confirm to me that you people are okay with this.
Okay, now let's move on to the next requirements of the questions. It says discuss whether Bella Houston should fulfill run fills order in full in March. Um, well, two, three things. It's, it's just that you just cannot actually talk from a single perspective. You got to talk from multiple perspective. In case if if run wilds order is not fulfilled in March, this would allow Bella Houston to earn a marginal profit, but that marginal profit would only be viable if the actual penalty paid Pair is less than the marginal contribution earned. Furthermore, not only financial aspects should be considered, but instead non-financial aspects should also be covered. So it's not just the financial aspect. The future likelihood of obtaining the orders would be lost. A potential future customer would be lost. So that's what you have to do. Can you people add up any other points? Yeah, can you add up any other points? Yeah, is there any other point that you can add? Okay, that's fine, not an issue. Now let's move on to the next requirement of the question. It says define the variable and constraints of the objective function to be used in a linear programming model to determine the optimum usage of resources in April. Okay. So we need to create the uh, linear programming model for this. It says Bella Houston company predicted that resources availability in March would continue into April. However, it has been discovered that availability of direct material and direct labor would be 15% less than 
in mars the availability machine times so and so so and so are unchanged then while could not be placing an order in april now see what are we going to do we are going to say uh, the first thing is define the variables let s is equal to number of spikes to be sold t is equal to number of trails to be sold r is equal to number of roads sold so the first thing is that you got to define the variable then you got to define the constraints constraints are the limitations so what would happen is that we already know it here 1.5 r uh, for the direct material 1.5 r plus 0.6 sorry 0.6 s plus 1.2 t is less than less than equal to <clears throat> how much is uh, 15% less material would be 15% less so 7200 into 7200 into 0.85 is 6120 6120 then you would have the direct labor which is going to be less than equal to 6900 into 0.85 <clears throat> gives you five eight six five. <clears throat> so when we talk about the labor, it's actually one one point five one. One R plus one point five S plus one R. The next is that machine hours. Zero point four R plus zero point two S plus zero point three T is less than equal to one eight one five. So you have got the you have got the, you have defined the variables. You have the constraints defined. Now what else is gonna be do? there there is a non negativity constraints which is r comma s comma t is greater than equal to 0 then lastly you have got the objective function that objective function is going to be how much is the contribution from uh, each one of them uh, it's basically 41.5 29.536 41.5 21.5 s plus 360 you get it now i wait do you get it now
Yeah, is that okay now? Okay, lovely. So we are done with this question also. <clears throat> now, um, so we had these uh, discussions. Uh, we went through two of the questions. One of them was about limiting resources. One of them was about the break-even analysis. Uh, I know that there are many other questions that we can do and many other things that we can actually cover up. So, uh, but uh, I think that uh, uh, we do have a few more uh, things that could be discussed. But in case if any one of you have got any questions, anything that you would like to ask, you can ask so that I could just explain to you because if I would get into the question, that is gonna take too long. So in case if any one of you has got any question, do let me know, I can help you out with that. The recordings uh, plus the handout, everything would be made available to you later today, inshallah. Okay, so in case if you have got any questions, anything to ask, let me know or else we'll conclude it here. 